working through that particular process. Some of the areas that we're starting to see some restoration, obviously will be up in Northeast Jackson, North Jackson, and some pockets up in West Jackson. Uh, but we still have some areas over Northside Drive that, that, that are not suited I have water. In areas of in South Jackson, went over to, off of Oak Forest, some areas toward Cooper Road did have water. Some other, other area, excuse me, closer to McDowell Road and, and closer to Raymond Road still are lacking uh, any, any water in that area. So progress has been made today. Uh, we are still uh, continuing to make progress. We'll make additional progress tomorrow and into the weekend. We do ask everyone, and I've, I've seen a lot of people that are washing cars, please conserve water right now if you can. Okay, we are still in a critical area right now. Uh, we are starting to see a lot of recovery in the system, but still, this is not a time to get relaxed. You know, we still need to cooperation from the community as we continue to get this water restored for our residents. And I am encouraged by the progress that we're seeing today. Uh, we'll continue to make progress uh, into the weekend. Our City of Jackson, where you have higher elevation. There's some areas over in north, off north side, close to Bowling Street. You still may have a couple of areas off of Finding Place that, that are still struggling right now. And then, of course, those areas that are in South Jackson, off of Terry Road and McDowell Road, those areas are still. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more time uh, for the water to get over there to get their water restored. But once again, these are higher elevated areas in the city. So we expected to see this. So we just want our residents who live in those particular areas to still stay, still stay encouraged uh, by the progress that we're seeing, and that you know we will get to where we need to be uh, very shortly. Dr. Williams, with the PSI getting up and the same with the tanks filling up, how much are these water main breaks still setting uh, setting these back? Do you know how many water main breaks we're currently up against the Jackson? Right now, we still have un about 48 that have been called in. Only about 15 of those have been confirmed. Now, that process is like this. People will call in 311. We will take that information. Once we get that information, we will have someone go out and inspect that site and then verify it. Once that site is verified, then uh, 811 will be called along with Atmos to come out and check for any additional underground utilities before we go in and start making repairs. Now, that does not happen overnight. But we do have right now, like I said, 15 confirmed. Uh, we've had 48 called in, but please note that some of those have just been meter issues. So that's why it's important for us to go out and verify those leaks. Total right now, as far as calls that we've gotten in, it's roughly around 75. We have completed 30 of those verified, and we had another five today, so we're up to 35 completed water main breaks and we're still working on the 12 that we verified and they're working on those today. Let me ask you about the manpower. There's some talk about a heat shortage in public works and that you may have to call in outside contractors. How confident are you that you can get the job done with the crews? And talk to me about the crews that you have, the number of crews, and what kind of hours are they doing? Our crews are pretty much working a full day. And we have three crews that are working on water main breaks. Uh, we're in constant contact every day. When they feel like that it's too much or they're, they're exceeding what they are able to achieve every day, they're gonna let me know. Right now, we do not feel that we will need to bring in outside contractors uh, in order for us to, to work, uh, make these repairs. But once again, that's the start of the communication process. As it relates to personnel, as you know, Across the Public Works Department, we're short, right? It's not just in water maintenance, it's also in sewer, paved streets, so there's a shortage there in personnel, obviously. But the way that the, the water main repairs work, you know, these guys are experienced. Most of the guys that I have on, on the crews, they've been there almost 15 years. A lot of knowledge and experience, so they know how to go in and make the repairs pretty quick. They know the calls to make as it relates to utility companies, so they are very uh, efficient uh, in, in order to make these repairs. But once again, we're not going to overload them. If it gets to a point this weekend that we get additional calls in or additional large breaks on larger lines that are roughly around 16, 18, or 20, 
then yes, I will call in an outside contractor to assist. So the brakes that you're seeing, are they, are they smaller main? Yes, these are somewhere between 6, 8, and 10. Okay, one more thing. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, how many uh, men do you have on each crew, and how long does it take to do an average to repair one, one average uh, brake? Depends on the size of the line. I mean, we've got roughly about six to seven guys per crew. You have a guy that drives the dump truck. You have a guy that actually operates the machinery. And then you have guys that help uh, make the repairs inside the hole. So roughly about six to seven, then you also have a supervisor. But, you know, uh, once again, they are working as efficiently as they can. We're not overexerting them. We are prioritizing the repairs or the, or the brakes. You know, we're, uh, the ones that are the larger ones or the, the big lines that feed into other lines, we're making those repairs first, and then we're working ourselves down to the small ones. Doctor, I know people are very, this is an answer, a question you probably can't answer, but is there a possible timeline on when you will see restoration for water, or what is it looking like? I think that as we go into the weekend, and every day that we're making progress, the more that we're able to sustain that PSI, and the ability to get the tanks refilled will ultimately determine when the complete restoration is. As I stated before, there are areas right now that, are, that have been restored, but as we work ourselves more south and west, those are the areas that will see the recovery, uh, you know, pretty much toward the end. And so we're checking areas over there just to make sure that, you know, we're being consistent uh, with those particular areas. And when I say consistent, we're checking pressures. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, at the intersection of Cooper and Oak Forest, where Marshall School is, closer to the Cooper and Oak Forest intersection, I got around 30 PSI at, at the daycare. But when I worked up closer to McDowell Road, where there's an elevation, it was a little bit less, a lot less than that. So that means that water is traveling to lower elevated areas in the city. But we still, as we continue to work uh, toward the restoration areas that are higher, this is going to take a little bit longer for it to get there. Let me ask you, how, how, do you, how, does, what, how does it work? Do you fill up the tank first, or does the water just flow into the mains and, and go out throughout the city? It consistently works together. So the more water that we push out, the most, uh, more water that actually gets into the distribution system. Ultimately, it does rise in the storage tanks, but it does not, we do not have to do it, uh, one does not have to be over the other. It's consistent. So Dr. Williams, these, you said you have three crews out uh, right now tending to the water main breaks. Where are we at the water treatment plants? Do you know how many personnel you have there and what's the status of the water treatment plant being fully functional again? That's a total separate question that you know we have staffing issues like across the excuse me, across the department but as relates to the the plant yes we, we do need more operators we need more maintenance maintenance staff but you know we're working uh, on that but as it relates to the operation of the plant that right now is not uh, affecting our ability to get water out into the system it's just we've made the repairs we've had vendors come in and right now, we just need to continue to push flow into the distribution system and get the pressure consistent so that we can get to a full restoration. So, specific, so specifically, though, do you know how many people are, are, are working at these plants right now? And, and, and again, what, what's a, what exactly is blocking the flow right now? Or is that there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing blocking the flow, okay? The, the plant is operational. There's not a problem there. Now, as far as the operation of the plant, you have water operators and you have a, a, a license a water operator that pretty much oversees the operation of the plant. You also have a maintenance supervisor and maintenance personnel that help maintain the plant. So those are in place right now. Uh, as we, if you're asking me, are we looking for additional personnel? Yes. If you are a Class A water operator, please call me. You know, because we need Class A operators. You know, we need additional maintenance uh, staff, but it was very hard to find class A operators in this area because Jackson is the largest water system, okay? So that's very difficult. But yes, uh, I, hey, if you are a class A operator and you are looking for an opportunity, give me a call. Well, if you, you make repairs of the water treatment plant, why is it taking so long for the ship? Shouldn't we be seeing more sort of getting back to normal at this point? Uh, I believe that we are. But what what is normal? Uh, in a particular crisis, we've been building every day, right, uh, to get to a particular point. 
Uh, we wanted to get to, really we wanted to get a little bit further ahead than where we were, our, where exactly where we are, you know, earlier this week, but we had some, some particular issues that popped up at the plant. Those were to be expected, you know, but as far as fully normal, uh, yes, we want everybody back in, in water, including our residents in South Jackson, but it's just going to take a little bit longer. But as the water continues to move through the system, gets to these lower elevated areas, gets to the higher elevated areas, then we will see that full restoration. I just want to make sure I understand, Dr. Williams. I'm sorry if I'm making you repeat yourself. So there's nothing uh, blocking the, fl the flow at this point. You're saying the plant is, is fully functional. So between the water treatment plant and water coming out of anybody's sink in South Jackson, what exactly is standing in the way besides elevation if the tanks are filling up? It's just elevation. And you know, the tanks will fill, but ultimately, as we said before, it's going to take longer for South Jackson, for water to get to South Jackson. So for instance, uh, I was at the intersection of McDowell Road and Greenwood, okay? Yesterday, I uh, stopped by the church right there and the water pressure was zero. Today, it was 12 PSI. So that's progress. That means that water is start, uh, starting to get over to McDowell Road. So that's a good thing. And also, too, it's starting to travel down Terry Road. So the water system loops in many different areas of the city. And it just takes time to get all of these particular water lines charged up to where they need to be. How big are these water tanks? Uh, how many gallons exactly it's can they fill up to? Uh, yes. <laughs> I can't tell you that off the top of my head. But we've got a lot of storage tanks and that whole millions of gallons of water. Do you expect to see uh, a, a huge increase in water main break? We have a big number right now, but the weather sort of, I guess, sort of, for lack of a better word, back to normal. Uh, in a, uh, uh, do you expect to see a huge jump and break? I, you know, I kind of think right now, hopefully we plateaued, you know, and because the weather has been warm over the past couple of days. And I think we've seen uh, some breaks that have occurred during that time. Uh, it has spiked up to a level that our crews have not been able to uh, stay ahead. And, you know, if we can get through the weekend without any additional as we continue to see pressures restored, you know, I think we'll be okay, but it's very hard to tell right now. Going back to the manpower real quick, Dr. Williams, so you, you acknowledged whether it's in the field or at the water treatment plant, there may be some, some shortages, but you opened it up with, uh, we, you don't think we need to hire private contractors at this time. If we did, wouldn't that maybe speed things up or who makes the decision on private contractors? Well, I'm not going to say, uh, necessarily uh, when you say speed it up, I mean, there's still a process that has to be done. Even if we hire private contractors, we still got to call 811. We still going to have to help assist them with turning off valves that they're not going to know about. So I'm not ruling that out. What I'm saying is, is that if we get to a point that we feel that it is getting above us, which we're not there yet, okay? Just because you see the list, that list is not verified, okay? We have to verify where those leaks are. But if we get to that point, then yes, we will get with the mayor and we will, uh, I have a term bid that would allow us to bring in contractors uh, to assist us. Anything, any additional questions? Good? All right, thanks. The city of Jackson there with the latest update on the ongoing issues with the water system. This is day 10 of the outage for many that was sparked by the Arctic storm in Mississippi last week. Public Works Director Charles Williams there saying crews are making progress, but the reality is there are still areas of the city that don't have water. Williams says many of those areas are parts of the city in higher elevated areas. Williams singled out South Jackson as an area where water recovery has been slow. A separate problem his crews are dealing with right now, that's water main breaks. The city has received about 75 calls about water main breaks. Not all of those have been verified. The city has completed about 30 repairs so far, and these are just public works crews on the ground right now. William says they don't feel like they need to bring in any outside contractors to finish the repairs. He says they get calls about some large water main breaks over the next few days, then they may call in outside contractors. Right now, Williams is asking people in Jackson to be patient and to conserve water when they can. He says don't wash your car or your clothes if you don't have to right now while they are getting these water tanks refilled. <laughs>